Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to those who are listening on the radio and those who are at home, nice and comfy and dry, watching us on the television. I only wish you could be here to see and feel what we are seeing and feeling up here on the podium. It is an amazing night, an amazing night for change. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that a healthy economy should provide those who work and contribute to it the ability to live and prosper from it. But ladies and gentlemen, that has not happened in the last four years. How could it have been when the UDP government has taken an additional $200 million in taxes out of your pockets? They doubled the duty on fuel, sending our electricity bills through the roof. They increased the import duties by 2%, which really translates to over 10% by the time the product gets to you on the store shelves. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when you pay duties, you pay duties on shipping. You pay duties on, you have a fuel surcharge. You pay duties on insurance. And 2% is actually 10% at the end of the day. Two out of 20 is 10%. So by the time that is getting, it goes through the levels of markup, from shipping to the supplier to your shelves. You are paying well over 10% more for the cost of your goods. They pounded the businesses with exorbitant increases in company and work permit fees, which were sometimes as much as 300% in increases. All of these had the combined effect of reducing employment and increasing the cost of living. Over the past three years, I have sat in my office day after day as I watched businesses close and more and more Caymanians were left without jobs. Some after 20 and 25 years of serving the same companies. I watched as my staff found it harder and harder to make ends meet because of the high cost of living. I myself faced the dilemma of having to downsize and let people go during such tough economic times. I felt the pain of having to say no to the many requests for sponsorships of programs for young people, for the elderly, and for the needy, all because in the face of a worldwide recession, our government overtaxed us. Not only did they overtax us, they squandered our money and gambled with our future. Tonight, we unveil the Progressives' Manifesto, a manifesto for hope, a manifesto for pride, a manifesto to secure the future of your kids and your grandkids, and the future of all Caymanians, new and old, and even those who have yet to be born. The Progressives are committed to rebuilding our economy by restoring investor confidence and stimulating development that will see our local businesses once again do well. How will we do this? We will develop a four-year plan to get government finances into shape, a plan agreed with the UK and the civil service. We will roll back the most damaging tax increases as soon as possible. We will publish reliable, up-to-date figures and make realistic estimates to bring certainty to investors and businesses. We will take care of our pillars of industry and the small business sector. We will encourage new industries, including medical and educational tourism. We will be willing to discuss concessions to attract new businesses or industries, but on a basis that will advance the national interest and not put existing businesses at a disadvantage. We will work closely with Cayman Finance and with the business and professional associations to improve the country's image abroad, improve our legislation and services, and attract more businesses and investment. We will remove the fears of business and investors that they may suffer from, so, so that they may not suffer from favoritism, interference, and unlawful demands. Hey. Progressive government, we remove the fears of business and investors 
that they may suffer from sudden large tax hikes or new kinds of taxations. We will remove the fares from businesses and investors that they may encounter unexpected human resource problems here. We will also maintain proper open processes for tendering on all government contracts. Amen. We, the progressive government, will uphold the rule of law, observe due process, and stamp out corruption and abuse wherever it exists. When we have a strong economy, we can build a healthy society, ladies and gentlemen. A government will be able to collect enough revenue to give us security, justice, health, social services, schools, roads, and infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, just remember, that is what the progressives do. We spend your money on you. The progressives will also focus on ensuring that as the economy rebounds, so will Caymanians through immigration reform, training and retooling of our people, and the introduction of apprenticeship schemes, especially in the hospitality industry. And last but not least, the encouragement of entrepreneurship and small business. I am a strong believer that the bulk of business in this country is small business. Small business employ thousands, pay the same fees without concessions or discounts, and they are at the core of what makes life in Cayman so spectacular for so many who live here. Shoe shops, restaurants, your plumber, your gardener, your coffee shop, your ice cream store, where you go to get your hair done, to buy your medication or a card for that special person, these are all small businesses, and ladies and gentlemen, they are in trouble. <laughs> to foster growth and development of the small and micro businesses, the progressives will carry out the following. We will reduce or delay startup costs and look for other ways of reducing business expenses in the early years of the business. We will streamline the bureaucratic requirements that currently hamper the startup of new businesses. We will work closely with the Chamber of Commerce and the Small Business Development Bureau. We will expand the role of small businesses, of the Small Business Development Unit, to include a specialized facilitation unit to coordinate the requirements of various government departments that have an input into the process. We will establish a small business fund that will provide loans to small and micro businesses at concessional rates up to a maximum of 50,000 and 25,000 respectively. Part of the requirement for assessing loans from the fund will be the attendance at basic marketing, accounting, and planning seminars aimed at ensuring the viability and success of the businesses. I grew up in a small business, and that is why I am so passionate that Caymanians can own and operate small businesses that can compete and be successful. If we have small businesses competing and being successful, we will provide the foundation for a strong and sustainable Cayman for generations and generations to come. And how do we achieve this? We achieve this by supporting them and not taxing them so much that they fail before they start, by giving them a fair chance to fight and not by providing fee breaks and duty concessions that encourage the developers to shop overseas for goods and services. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the progressives say no more. No more to secret deals that include hundreds of free work permits we say no more to favoritism and, de and decades of exemption and fees and licenses. We say we have the expertise and the ability to build it right here. All that our small businesses need is a chance and the opportunity to do so. 
we are going to provide those opportunities so that our small businesses and businessmen and businesswomen can thrive and create jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, when you vote for the progressives, you will be voting for a level playing field for our homegrown businesses and for jobs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joey Hugh, number eight. Yes, I will be great, but vote progressive straight.